mixing, fixing for another big game. It's a coach. You're set for Madden football on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see running back Joe Mixon coming off a 100-yard performance a week ago as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Baltimore Ravens. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, autumn has arrived in the mid-Atlantic region of the U.S., and it is a glorious afternoon at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And Charles, you look at this Raven team as they get ready here. They've got all W's on the ledger so far. A perfect 6-0. Yeah, still a long way to go in this season, but they're showing everyone early on that they intend to be there in the end. Meanwhile, for the Bengals here, they too were winners last time out, so something's got to give here. I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. Getting toward the halfway point of the NFL season. Week 7 is underway on EA Sports. This is fielded at the goal line. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. So here come the Ravens now, ready to get the football for the first time. They'll have Lamar Jackson calling the shots, the former Heisman Trophy winner from Louisville. That was a solid performance last week, wasn't it? Two touchdowns, no interceptions, ran the team well, won the ball game, bottom line. May not have been earth-shattering, but it didn't need to be. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. That's caught by the former center, Mark Andrews. 20, 10, and all the way in for the Ravens touchdown. Mark Andrews, his fourth touchdown of the year. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. That is a quick strike. One play all the way to the house. You know, the pass was fine, but that run after the catch, impressive. An absolute horrible time. Of course, any time like this is a horrible time for a defensive breakdown. But where's the tackling? Where were the safeties? You don't expect him to catch the ball. And next thing you know, he's running into the goalpost this early in the game. That's not supposed to happen. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And the Ravens lead at 7-0. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. And this could be a whole lot of fun because if his game plan goes into effect early, we're going to see some shots downfield, aren't we? What did he talk to us about? Stretching the field. Wants to open things up for not just his receivers, but for anything underneath. Well, that was the theme, the front page of the sports section. What did the columnist write? Possible air raid. So we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the coaches view that, right? What? Who gave away the game plan? I think it's pretty obvious, though. That'll help them win. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. The defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. 
Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Play action fake. They'll look to throw. Open man is Uzama. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. And a look now at the Cincinnati offense. Out of the backfield is Joe Mixon, and he was a valuable commodity coming out of the University of Oklahoma because of his ability to be so versatile. Can run it inside with power, gets to the perimeter, and can outrun people. Catches the ball not only out of the backfield, but you can split him out just like he would be a receiver. And I think if he wanted to dedicate himself, he'd be an all-pro kick returner. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. He was solid last week, over 100 yards in their victory on the ground. They want to get that going again. Absolutely. What they also understand is that from week to week, it's not necessarily the same, but they want it to be, right? What they saw last week on the ground, they want to see in this game as well. They go play action here on first down. Almost able to intercept it. That's one he would have liked to have held on to on his first drive. Instead, second down. Now the starters on the defensive side of the ball for the Ravens. They were excellent last week in the win over the Chargers. And what I saw on film was nearly an unstoppable pass rush. They had five sacks last week, plenty of hurries. So now do you just max protect on offense, keep everyone in and run, you know, one or two receiver routes to make sure your quarterback stays up? We'll soon find out. On second down, here's Mixon. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And they'll be facing a third and 12. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Got his left. Got his left. We got three. We got three. Back to throw here. Got an open man. That's C.J. Uzama. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 28. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon. And that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? Mixon with a first down carry. The numbers for Mixon last week, 23 carries, 114 yards, and a score. And they love what they've got in him. He's the number four rusher in the league right now, so you know that you have to account for him on defense, which means you can play complimentary football as well. Throw the play action, get it out to the wide receivers, because they should have some open space, because the defense will key on them. And they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. They're able to push his way through. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the seven. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A stop there on third. They could have held him to three on this opening drive. Now they have to bow their necks on first and goal. And if I'm looking at this from the offense's point of view, that's a big-time pickup right there, and I'd go right at him with another momentum play. I'd go quickly and attack him because right now they probably have their heads down a little bit since they didn't stop him on third down. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. They'll run it now out of the gun. Fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out. And that moment we just saw, always so special for any rookie, the first touchdown of his career. And there's nothing like anticipation, is there? You know he's been dreaming about it, thinking about it. It's been a part of every bit of his being. And finally, it gets done. He's got to feel great right now. Extra point splits the uprights. 
And we are tied at seven. So that one a long 11-play drive. And in the end, it's capped off by a seven-yard run. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And last time the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up. Whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drive is exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was very easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. On first down, Dobbins, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Every year I go to the combine, I marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. On second down now, Dalvins. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. On third down, Jackson. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 44-yard line. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered. But how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. Jackson now already over 100 yards passing in just this first quarter. It's first and 10. From the gun, it's Jackson. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. It's a gain of seven, and that'll make this a second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. First carry now for Justice Hill. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Four yards the pickup. First down. These two teams all tied after one. From the 34 now, here's first and ten. From the gun, Jackson. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. To throw is Jackson. Looking for the end zone. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. This throw caught at about the five. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. They'll run here with Edwards. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Gus Edwards, his second touchdown on the season. And the Ravens have taken the lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there. And they got in for six points.
And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that makes the score 14-7. to So that drive goes a full 80 yards in 10 plays. And the capper that put it in the end zone, a run of 8 yards. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He'll rifle this one deep right. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Well, we spent a lot of time exalting the offensive masterminds in this game, right? They draw up these beautiful plays. They look so perfect up on the board. But occasionally, sometimes you just say, throw it up and let him go get it. How about that play? So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Now Joe Mixon. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. On second down, Mixon runs through the contact. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. He'll look to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Third and long defense with no fear. They brought the pressure. Zero fear at all. That means they feel really good about the guys we're going to cover. But the biggest one is they think their pressure will get there before he has a chance to find an open receiver. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. So here are the Ravens to take over on offense. Their win streak at six coming in and counting as they've got the lead right now beginning this drive first and 10. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Jackson from the shotgun. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. But it looked like a Raven was able to get in there, and they will indeed keep the possession. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Stepping up, he'll try and run. It'll be a pickup of five on the keeper. It's second down. Oh. 
second and five. On second down, five. Hill. And he is going to be close to a first down as the tackle made at the Bengals 34. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. On third down, Dobbins, and he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. They'll be marked inches short, no gain on the play, and that's going to lead him to fourth down. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. We've hit the two-minute mark in the second quarter, 14 to seven. Would have been a decently long field goal, 51 yards from here, but instead, they're gonna go for it. They'll try and run for it. Oh, and I think he went backward. He did. Now it appears we've got an injured Raven down there on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. The Bengals drive about to get going. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. Don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Second and five. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. So now third and ten, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. They'll look to throw. Looking deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Gus Edwards heading back onto the field. He only has a single solo carry, one. Numero uno, second quarter. They need to get in the ball more, don't they? I'm not the greatest statistician in the world. Yeah, you are. But a back like that with only one carry kind of takes me back to college in the classroom. Not enough evidence to declare what you should do the rest of the game. Give him the ball some more and find out. Will they incorporate him? We'll find out. The Ravens get a new set of downs. Give them 17 on that pickup. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Now Jackson on first down. He'll get this to Edwards out of the backfield. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first down. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Jackson. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Again, Jackson. Well, the two men come together, and it's incomplete. Excellent work defensively, brings up fourth down. Didn't have a receiver up and downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight, unable to find anyone open. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. 
And he was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know what else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, well, the conclusion we draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. They'll keep it on the ground again here. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. A lot to get to here as some of the division races starting to take shape as we look around the NFL here in week number seven. We'll begin our tour up at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland. And as you see, they were winners back on Thursday night. Baker Mayfield. Two touchdown passes as his guys remain unbeaten. From there, we head to Foxborough to check on the Patriots at home at Gillette Stadium. And they have the lead over the visiting New York Jets. Cam Newton with a couple of touchdown passes there. Finally, let's get up to the place they call Titletown, Green Bay, Wisconsin, to see what's happening with the Packers. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. Adam Humphreys, a touchdown reception. In the game you're watching, we've seen a strong first half out of Lamar Jackson. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. Fielded about a yard deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors. But overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made. And that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. They'll drop the throw. He gets this one to Boyd. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trade in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They'll run on first down. Nixon. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Again, it's Nixon. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. First down. 
A first carry for Samaj P. Ryan. And after getting tackled, he's still down and looking very slow to get up. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Nixon. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. Sometimes with the running game, you just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. So they did not bring pressure, and turns out probably a bad idea. Yeah, he had time to stand in the pocket and deliver a strike. So I'm wondering if they're going to note that, and next time just go ahead and bring that pressure. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. <laughs> On the run, it's Mixon. And an alley to run. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. On second down now, it's Evans. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. He'll look to throw. That's caught by his tight end, Uzama. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. And that'll be enough to keep the drive moving forward. Another first down on the pickup of five yards. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. On first down, Nixon, and he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Once again, they run with Mixon, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Four yards to pick up, first down. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Open man is Higgins. And here he'll get it down to the seven. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. From the gun to give to Mixon. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Four yards on the play. That's going to lead to first and goal. Mixon trying to punch it in. And he is in. Touchdown, Bengals. Joe Mixon, his fifth touchdown now on the year. As they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. And he was excellent on that drive. He deserved to be the one to get across the chalk. Oh, I agree with you totally. A workhorse on the drive. And how about that last decisive run to punch it in? Now the extra point try forthcoming. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. And what a drive that was. 16 plays all told. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. So all square here in this third quarter as the kick's away. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. 
First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game. We'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You've got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect. But overall, you like what your game plan's showing you. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. They run it again with Hill. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. Now a first down carry. It's Hill. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. From the 40 now on second down. Jackson setting up the screen here to Edwards. I know it's an emotional game, Charles. You can't do that. And when you get into your film sessions and you argue your case with your coaches, that's exactly what they say at the end. You just can't do it. It costs your team. 57 to the mic. Get him. Get him. Get him. Jackson on first down. And this is caught by Watkins. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 10 yards there. Good enough for a Raven first down. And now he'll tuck it and run. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. He'll pick up seven there on the first down keeper. This is Hill on the draw play. And the stump will come inside the five at the four. That leads us to a first and goal. It's a pickup of eight. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. A field goal could get them the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. And he will take it in for a Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson, his second TD of the game and 16th of the season. And they are able to break the tie and move out in front here in this fourth quarter. Offensively, pretty effective option play there for the score. Certainly was, and it appeared to me that the defense overshifted and overplayed the trail back, the pitch man, and almost forgot about the quarterback. In fact, they did forget about the quarterback, and he turned it into a touchdown. Tucker now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. So this drive spans seven plays, and it was capped off by the touchdown run that came from Lamar Jackson. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Calais Campbell, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Well, someone's closing in on the league lead in sacks. He came into the game in the top five. Now you add two more to his total. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. Second and 14. Oh, the 
pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Calais Campbell in there for the sack, and it's an important one from a personal standpoint as that is sack number 100 in what has certainly been a terrific career to this point. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. He'll drop to throw. And he double coverage and it's intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on-the-job training, so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. They stick on the ground on first down with Hill. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. And he'll take this one inside the 10, down to the 8. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Third down, Jackson. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. The Clemson product, DJ Reader, got in for the sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to perhaps salt this one away. Tucker's kick is good. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. A big one there. That gives him a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, blood a little time off the clock, put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender, you go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So now the Bengals down 24-14. Just over two minutes to go. They'll have one play here just north of the two-minute warning. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now a dump off here complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. First down now, but the clock continues to move. They'll set up a throw. This pass complete to Higgins. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Second and three. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. 
You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Back to throw here. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. Now back to throw. He completes it to Evans. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. Now the Bengals urging everybody to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. They'll look to throw here, and that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Back to throw. Looks to throw, fires right side, and that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. It's in the fourth quarter down in Miami. And the Falcons, they wind up winning that one. Mike Davis, two touchdowns on the ground to help lead the way. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal for the offense. 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. And they will take a knee here. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. And they'll indeed take a knee. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And it wasn't really always pretty. They had their bumps and bruises. Really, both sides did. But they did what they needed to do at home to get the win. Yeah, they really had to grind this one out, didn't they? Because nothing came easy. Every snap was a major league brawl. They had to win at the line of scrimmage, win downfield. They got all those things accomplished. But to win a close one like this... You know, every team wants to be physical. We've heard that a million times, right? But those who are mentally tough, those are the teams that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game. So for Baltimore, their winning ways continue as they get it up to 7-0. and And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for Cincinnati, they dip to 2-5 and five now with the loss. And they'll try and turn things around next week as they have a date at MetLife Stadium with the New York Jets. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.